Working on YouTube, it's Michael here, and today I have got another keyboard that I have played in Germany. Um, if you watch my video of um, my three day trip to Germany, you also see me playing a few things on this keyboard and um, been playing on the, some of the styles and that. And um, this is the keyboard that I've got that I've played in Germany. And here it is. Here we are, we have the new Yamaha PSR EW410. Now I had two choices. I could have went for the 61 key version, the PSR E463. But I decided to go big and go for the 76 key version, the PSR EW410. Because not only does it have 76 keys, but it also has some other things that the 61 key version, the PSR E463, didn't have. So yes, I will go through some of the differences between this keyboard and the PSR E463, but right now I'm going to unbox this keyboard. Here we have the um, mains adapter. And in here is the owner's manual and the music rest. And here it is, the new Yamaha PSR EW410. So now right in front of me is the new Yamaha PSR EW410 keyboard. Some of you may know that um, I have a PSR E443. I bought it um, four years ago when that was the current entry level keyboard. Well. I no longer have the PSR E443 as I have sold it. I sold it a couple of months ago because um, this one will replace it. But there were, there were two more keyboards before the PSR E463 and the PSR EW400. Um, a couple of years ago there was the PSR E453 and PSR EW400. I skipped those models and decided to go for this one, the next one up the replacement of the PSI E453 and the EW400 and um, got the PSI EW410 and didn't get the E463 because I wanted to have a longer keyboard. So I sold my E443 to get this one. And right now I'm going to go through with you some of the differences between this keyboard and the 61 key version the PSR E463. Now the first difference between the two keyboards is that the PSR EW410 here has 76 full-size keys, whereas the PSR E463 had 61 full-size keys. And the next difference is that the PSR EW410 here has the live grand piano voice, whereas the PSR E463 only had the standard grand piano voice, just like it had on all the other PSR E keyboards, just like the PSR E443, E453, etc. And when it comes to sampling, the PSR EW410 has seven sample zones, whereas the PSR E463 had five sample zones. And the next difference between the two keyboards is that the PSR EW410 here has two 12 watt speakers, whereas the PSR E463 only had two 6 watt speakers. So on the PSR EW410 here, the speakers are twice the power than on the PSR E463. 
And the last difference between the two keyboards is that the PSR EW410 here has the AUX outputs. The PSR E463 did not have those outputs. So those are just some of the differences between the PSR E463 and PSR EW410 here. And right now, I'm going to go through the functions and features on this keyboard and show you how to use these features. Thank you very much for watching and hope you enjoy. Now, the first thing I want to show you on this tutorial of the Yamaha PSR EW410, and that is the functions. With the function button here on the top right side of this video. Now I promise you that I won't make this tutorial as long as I did with the last one, which was the Casio CTX 5000. Yes, I thought that the, um, the tutorial of the CTX 5000 was quite long, but with the Casio CTX 5000, they've crammed so many features on that keyboard, which is also the same range as this keyboard, which is an entry level keyboard. So yes, they've crammed so many features on that keyboard, which is a good thing. And um, so yes, I won't make this tutorial as long as the CTX 5000. So right now, I'm going to go through with you the functions of this keyboard. So I'll probably go through nearly every feature of this keyboard with the functions, ranging from dual voice, split voice, main voice, reverb, chorus and other features as well. So we just press the function button and then the screen will appear. There you go, the style volume, which alters the um, styles volume. So I'll just do that quickly now. And then we have the song volume. So if we select a song, and then we can change the volume. to the voice to so go back to the functions and then we have the groove volume which is the groove creator volume so I'll show you that quickly and you just press these two buttons simultaneously to get the default go to the functions again and we have the aux in audio volume and but we haven't got anything connected and we have the USB in volume, which adjusts the volumes of audio playback that's input to the USB to device. So basically, because um, this keyboard has an audio player, an audio recorder, um, and when you play something back with audio, that's when you can use this to change the volume of it. But I will show you the um, audio recorder later on this video. And then we have the transpose, so you can transpose the keyboard just like this. And we can also change the tuning, so just like this. through some other functions we have the pitch bend range because this keyboard has um, a pitch bend wheel so we can change the pitch bend range just like this or this or this it goes up to 12 it goes up to 1 to 12 so 1 and 12 which basically pitches it up to an octave just like that. So that's just a pitch bend range. And then we have the split point in which um, you can alter the styles um, left hand side. So you can have it any way you want. So just like this. So the default is up to here. And then we can just change that. We can just change that to say up here. If you wanted to, if you wanted to, although not recommended, 
you can have it throughout the entire keyboard just like this. So we just put that back to default. So if you was to do that, go through the whole keyboard with the split point, then there would be nowhere to um, play any melodies, would there? <laughs> okay, so um, we go through some more functions. And now we have the touch response. Um, we can like change the, the touch response. So um, we it's on medium now, so we just pr play it normally. Or we can have it hard, so you have to press it a little bit harder. Or soft. Or fixed. Now what that means, fixed, it acts as if the keyboard is not touch sensitive. It's on fixed velocity. So it doesn't matter how hard or soft you play the keys. It's fixed. So we just put that back to default. And then we have the main voice volume. So we can just alter that. And then we have the main voice octave. And then we have the main voice pan pot. So it's um, 64 at the moment, which means that it's in the center. But if we do it up to 127, it will only come out on the right side of the speaker. So it will come, up, it will come out on the um, right speaker, where nothing comes on the, on the um, left speaker, except for the reverb. And if we did it the other way around, go to all the way down to zero, and then the pan pot, Will only, the, the pan pot, sorry, the, the sound will only come from the left hand side of the speaker while the reverb is on the right hand. So we'll just put that back to default. And then we have the main voice reverb, so we can change the reverb types. I'll show you that quickly now. Oh, sorry, no, my bad. Um, this is the, the reverb um, dense, density, so it's up, the 100, it's up to 127, so the reverb you get a lot of reverb. And if we put it down to say zero, then you have no reverb. Just put that back to default. And the same thing goes to chorus. There you go, you, could, you can hear the difference. Well, hopefully the video will pick up the difference. And then we have the main voice attack. There you go, just like that. So put that back to defaults and put it down to zero. It'll still be the same. So let's put it to 80, say. There you go. That's something that is more likely to be used in the synthesizer voices. And then we have the main voice release. So we just put that to say 100. So it kind of acts as if it's a sustain, although it's not sustain. There you go. If the release is set down to um, zero, you get that sort of effect. Let's just put that back to default. Let's back to normal. And then we have the main voice cutoff, which you can do this. And then we can also have the main voice resonance as well. So just like that. Um, but to me, I don't see why there's any point in doing it like that because there's on the left hand, I'm sorry, yeah, on the left hand side of the keyboard, you have here the real time control knobs here on the left center, um, in which you can do resonance and cut off the same way, just like this. But I'll show you more with the real-time control knobs later on in this video. And then we and then we have the dual voices here. So we just turn the dual voice on. So that we have piano and strings. And with here we can change the dual voice as well. So we've got strings or let's just select any random voice. So let's just say 83 or 111 
So that's where you can change the door voice. And then exactly what I did with the main voices, but also on the dual voices, the volume, the octave, the pan pot, the reverb, chorus, attack, release, um, cut off a resonance, um, just exactly as I showed you with the main voice. So I won't go through them because it's exactly the same as I demonstrated with the main voice. Um, we have the split voice. I'll show you that quickly now. Um, the split voice in which you can, if, you, if we, we turn on the split voice, we can have a voice for our left hand. So here's the piano. And now we have the bass. Oh, hang on. There we go. That's the left hand. And now with this, you can change the um, left hand voice, just like this. Just like with the main voices, you can change the dual voice and split voice to any of the 758 built-in sounds this keyboard has. And then the same thing, the split volume, octave, pan pot, reverb, chorus, and so on. And now we go for the reverb effects. We have the hall. Oh, I just turn everything off quickly. One sec. There you go. So we have the hall reverb. Hall two. Hall three. Hall four. Um, one second. I'm just going to select a sound in which you can just about hear the difference of the different reverb types. So we're back on them reverb, and we select a drum kit for this. Just trying to find a... So yes, we go back to Hall 1, Hall 2, Hall 3, Hall 4. So you can hear the echo lasting longer. And then we have the Cathedral reverb. I'll turn up a bit more so you can hear the difference. Room one. Room two. Room three. Stage one. Stage two. Plate one. Plate two. And off. So that there's no reverb. And my bad on um, the cathedral, I said cathedral one. There's no cathedral two or cathedral three, so my bad. <laughs> so that's all the, the reverb types. And now we have the chorus types. So um, just go back to the piano voice. And turn that down a bit. And here with the function, we can change the chorus types. But what would help is that we go back to the um, main voice. Mm, one second. There you go, main voice chorus. So that, because it's um, default is zero. There we go. And then we can go back to the um, chorus section. There we go. So chorus one. Chorus two. Chorus three. And then we have flanger one. And flanger two. And off. So that's just some of the... Um, chorus types and we go back to the main voice and put that back to the um, default main voice chorus default here you go back to zero and then go back to chorus and now we go through the other functions we have go through the um, master equalizer I will show you the um, different equalizer types there's the speaker headphones boost piano bright and mild. So I'm just going to play a style so that you can hear the differences.
so just like that, um, the different equaliser types. And now we go through the, um, the um, melody suppressor, um, which unfortunately I can't show at the moment because I haven't got a USB stick in the keyboard with an audio um, song. But I think this, what the melody suppressor does that it cancels the vocals on certain songs, depending on which channel it's on, if you was to edit it using software on your computer. So we'll have to skip that, but that's what it is, the um, melody suppressor. And now we move to the different DSP types. Um, there are 10 different types, so I'll show you those quickly. Um, one second, let me just go through the... Um... Oh, <laughs> yes, um, silly me, I forgot to turn the DSP on. So there we go, the DSP effects is now turned on. So you get effects such as the rotary speakers. Distortion 1 and 2 Chorus Flanger Phaser Tremolo Autopan LPF HPF so yes, those are just the DSP effects. And now we have the harmony and arpeggiators. So I'll show you that now. There are 26 different harmony types and 150 different arpeggiator types. So I'm gonna show you the harmony. Now with the harmony, I have to turn on the um, auto accompaniment. So we get harmony effects such as this. Oh, gotta turn it on. this and then um, let's go through the other some, some other ones we have like the trill harmony in which I'll show you So just like that. Um. Or echo. And now we have the um, arpeggiator types. I will show you those. Um, there are too many arpeggiators for me to show you them all. There's 150 altogether. But here's some of the um, arpeggiator types. I think some of these arpeggiator types would, would work better um, with um, synthesizer voices. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, select a synth. Oh, not that one. Um, there we go. And then we turn on the um, arpeggio. Go back to the functions. And then we can select different arpeggiator types. So yeah, so those are the harmony and arpeggiator types. We'll go back to the function and we're gonna go, and there's the, the harmony volume, and which I'll show you. So let's just go back to the piano sound. Go back to the functions and do the trio harmony type. do the harmony volume no 
notice that the harmony is just slowly fading away as you turn down the volume and it gets louder as you turn it up and then we have the arpeggio velocity which are two choices we have um, original and key depending on the arpeggio type um, I'm not sure how it works but it just depends on the um, arpeggio type and then we have the arpeggio quantize again depending on the um, arpeggio type and then we have the pedal functions um, which um, you have three choices you have sustain arpeggio hold and hold and sustain um, I don't have a pedal connected to the keyboard right now but that's what it is and now moving on with the functions we have the scale tuning we have five different scale tune types we have the equal which is normal pure major pure minor bayat and rast so i'm going to go through the um, five preset scale types so we have the equal which is normal and then pure major pure minor and bayat And rest. So those are the the scale presets. We'll just put that to normal. Go, and then we have the bass note. I'm not so sure what that is, but you have these different types. And now the next bit we have the two note. Basically, what that is that you select. You select a um, note, so let's say we'd, we'd take D for example, and then go to the next category of the tune, and then we can tune it. So... So, all the other keys are normal, just like this. Except for D. And then we can just go back and we can tune another note. So let's say F for example, and then we go and tune that. So... So just like this. So we're just going to put those to default. And at least with that you can... At least with that you can like um, make your own sort of scale tuning. like Just like Arabic scale. So like make your own tuning so that you can tune each key individually. So we go back to C. So those are just the um, the scale tuning. Now moving on there, we have um, we got some MIDI functions, but I don't have anything connected to a computer or anything. Here we have local on, but if we turn the local off, then nothing. There's no sound coming from the keyboard. But then we turn it back on. This is all to do with um, like if you were to connect your keyboard to a computer, and then we have here the external clock which is where you can toggle that on and off and then we have the keyboard out on and off and then we have the start out on and off or the song out but there's um the song isn't selected so we can't choose that and then we have initial send and then and the other functions we have we have loop back on and off I think that's to do with the um, audio, audio loopback. And then we have blank cut, which is, um, you can toggle that on and off. And we have the um, time signature numerator, which, which alters the beat of the metronome. So it's on four beats at the moment, so it sound like this. Oh, we'll just turn the tempo up. And go back to the function and now we're going to have it three beats as if it was a waltz beat or two beats or one beat or no beats so it just keeps on ticking that goes up to zero 
all the way up to 60. Well, that's a lot. <laughs> so we just put that back to default and turn off the volume. Um, sorry, the metronome. And now moving on with the metronome functions, we have we have time signature denominator, which I'll show you. So the default is four. And then we're going to put it to two. So basically, in other words, cuts the tempo in half. And then we go to eight, which makes it even faster. And then 16. So it goes up to 16, put it back onto defaults, and then we turn the metronome off. And then moving on, we have the metronome volume. Just put that back to defaults. And now moving on with the functions. Uh, yes, sorry, I had to um, stop the video and turn on the lights because it's um, getting a bit dark outside. I think we are, um, I think there's a storm heading our way. So yes, yeah, so I had to stop and turn on the lights. Now moving on with the functions. We have the demo group. So we have the demo, the preset, user, download, USB and audio. So basically um, when demo is being selected, when you press the demo button, it will just keep playing the three main demo songs over and over. And then you press preset, it will play the 30 presets. And then when you press user, when you press the demo button, it will automatically, it will just keep um, playing the user songs that you create, created yourself, in which I haven't created any yet. And then we have the download which is downloadable songs in which you've um, transferred into the keyboard and then USB songs in which you've got on your USB stick and audio songs and so on and then we have the play mode which is um, which um, I can't access at the moment because I think it's something to do with the um, audio songs but um, we have two different choices otherwise and um, demo play mode it'll be normal and random or normal or random, sorry. And no, my bad, it's not to do with the audio, it's to do with the demo songs. And then we have the um, speaker mute, which is off, but we mute the speaker, then nothing. And then we have the auto off, which is the um, auto power for the keyboard. You have, to, um, if, you turn it, if you turn it off, the um, keyboard will, stay on and then we, if you select five if you don't touch the keyboard for five minutes the keyboard will automatically turn itself off and if you select 10 if you don't touch the keyboard for 10 minutes it'll turn itself off and then goes to 15 up to up to two hours so it's on 120 so if you don't touch the keyboard for two, two hours the keyboard will turn itself off. So we're gonna put that back to defaults and go to 30. And then we have the battery type, which um, I don't have batteries. This is um, powered on by mains adapters. We have these different type of batteries, alkaline and NIMH. I don't know what that is myself. And finally, with the functions, we have the language, which is, um, we have like different languages like English, or Japanese and so on basically what that is um, determines the language for the song names but I don't understand Japanese at all though I wish I could <laughs> so um, there you go and um, that is all of the functions and the features of this keyboard and that's um how to go through different functions now the next thing I want to show you on this keyboard is a little bit similar to the um, functions that I've showed you just um, earlier on but as you can see um, on some of these buttons you have these icons here 
because on the, on the right hand side of the keyboard there's this little box that has um, a picture of an arrow on the left side of it and it says press and hold. Um, now that applies to certain buttons um, for example I'll show you some of them now um, with this uh, comp on and off button here it says split point if I um, hold down the button for about a second it will take as you can see on the screen it will take me directly to the split point function and if I go to the split voice I hold that down it will take me to the split voice so I can change the split voices and the same thing for the dual voice I hold that down it takes me straight to the dual voice function in which I can change the dual voices and the same thing for the DSP um, I can change the DSP type and here I can change the uh, harmony and arpeggio if I hold down that button and the time signature with the metronome button and so on and um, just one more example um, the um, equalizer type if I hold that down it takes me straight directly to the um, equalizer types so that's how you go to um, some of the direct functions of this keyboard by holding down a certain button for about a second and it will take you straight to that function. And now I want to show you how to create registration memories on the Yamaha PSR EW410. On here we have, here we have the M4 registration memory buttons here and we have the bank button. There's all together eight banks on this keyboard giving you a total of 32 registration memories that you can save. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So first of all we're going to select our sounds and styles that we want to have stored. So we're going to have the um, turn on the dual voice and have piano and strings. And then we're going to select our style. Anyone will do, just for the example. And we're going to select main B as a variation. And then we just hold down bank and press any one of these four buttons. And that's your registration memory saved. So we just select registration memory bank two. One, one sorry. And then we have our One thing I forgot to do is to turn on the uh, comp. So now that's on, just hold that down again. So we're going to just select um, any other voice, just for this example, and a different style, and turn off dual voice. Then press the registration memory button number one. registration memory automatically gets loaded and now we do um, another one for this example and um, we're going to select we're going to turn off the dual voice and we're going to change our voice we're going to change it into um, we're going to change it into a synth and we're going to change the style We're going to change it into, yeah, we'll change it into that. And have it um, variation A. Make sure that the comp is turned on. And with the synth, we're going to turn on the arpeggio type. And then once you're happy with all that, we're going to um, hold down the bank button and select registration memory number two. So that registration memory is now saved. So here's what we got on registration memory number one. And registration memory number two. So 
that's just part of bank one of um, the registration memories. There's altogether eight banks of um, registration memories, giving you a total of um, 32 different registration memories to store. And that is how you create and store registration memories. Another quick little feature that I want to show you is the um, song melody voice. So we're going to select a demo song. Um, so we just select a song. Here we have the um, grand piano demo. can actually change that voice so we are going to select the voice button here and we can select it to any one of these voices here and I will show you how so we are going to um, select our voice so how about a harp sound and then what we do we will, we will play a song and then we will hold down the voice button for, for a second because it's got the song melody voice with the um, arrow icon there so play the song, press the voice button for about a second, and it changes the voice. So I think that's quite a neat feature. Or maybe you want to select um, a synth sound, say. So that's just a little, um, just a quick demo on how to um, use the song melody voice to change the voices of the uh, melody of the demo songs. Just another quick thing that I want to show you um, is the portable grand. So let's say you, you've um, got all sorts of different voices on the keyboard, like this voice here. <laughs> It's got the dual voice as well turned on but if you want to um, get to the piano sound really quickly simply just press the portable grand button up here and then it will take you straight to the piano sound so just just as simple as that to get to the piano sound and here's something else that I want to show you um, that is the categories. Um, maybe some of you don't want to scroll through all the different voices with this um, dialer wheel here. Um, another way to um, get to category straight away is just to press the category buttons here. So we're on the piano sound at the moment. And then we go to the electric piano. Organ. Accordion, guitar, and so on. So that's another quick way to get to the different categories of this keyboard. Um, it doesn't just do it for the voices. It does it with the styles as well. So we're on the 8-beat, um, 16-beat, ballad, dance, disco, and um, what's the other one? Swing and jazz, and so on. It does it with the songs as well. So we have um, the um, categories of songs. We have the the, dem the voice demo, the piano demo, sorry, the piano solo, piano ensemble, piano accompaniment, and so on. The user, and um, also the groove creator does that as, with that as well, with the categories. Instead of going through the um, different rhythms and sounds, etc., with the dialer wheel, you can just change them you can just change the categories like that quickly, pressing these buttons here. And for the groove creator, we have electro, we have dance pop, euro dance, house, trance, hip hop, and so on. So that's just a, a quick way into getting to the different categories of sounds and styles and songs on this keyboard. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is here, the real-time 
life control knobs in which we have um we can have like resonance and cut off reverb and chorus dsp parameter a and b attack and release volume balance and retrigger rate and um, which i will show you now and now on them um, and we press this button to um, select the knob assigned. We have diff five different knob assigns. And um, on knob assigns of up to one to four, you can select whether you can have it as the keyboard or the backing, as you can see on the screen. Hopefully you can see it, it will change. So it's currently on backing. And now it's keyboard, backing, keyboard, backing, keyboard. So you can toggle it. And um, we're going to show them the keyboard side of it so that affects the voices on the keyboard when using the um, control knobs so we are on knob assign one which is the cutoff and resonance so here it is And then knob assign number two, we're going to select number two, um, which affects the reverb and chorus. So on the left knob here, we um, it ups the um, reverb, so just like this. And on the right one, that triggers the chorus. And then we're going to knob assign number three and we're going to turn on the DSP that affects the DSP parameters. So here is DSP parameter A. And parameter B. And um, number sign number four is the attack and release of the voices. So here is the attack. And here is the release. which basically acts as if it was um, sustain. So those um, number sign, um, these affects the voices, whereas um, number sign number five affects the backings, in which um, I will get to in a moment. And now I'm going to show you the backing side of the um, real-time live control knobs. And um, I apologise um, that um, earlier on I said that Live control um, knobs assign one to four is for the keyboard and backing. I apologize, number four isn't for the backing, as you can see on the screen. It doesn't change, it's just for the keyboard that one. But one to three is for the keyboard and backing, and um, number five is just for the backing, in which I will show you. And um, now we move on to the um, backing side of the um, real control knobs. So we're going to select a um, groove creator pattern. Anyone would do. So let's um, say take this one, turn it down a bit, and with this we select back in. That's it. Go to go back to um, knob assign number one, and we select back in. And what that does is it now affects the backings. So just like this. And just to quickly show you, that also is the same for the styles as well. Not just the um, groove creator. So yes, the, um, the backing applies to the groove creator and the um, styles. 
So now we move on to um, number two. See that the um, chorus and the reverb are in effect of the backing, and now we move on to um, DSP parameters, and we select backing. There we go. So that's the, the DSP parameters. And just to quickly show you, that also affects the styles. Just wanted to show you quickly that it also affects the styles, not just the groove creator. And um, one more thing with the backing, uh, with the um, live control knobs. Um, number four, it only affects the keyboard. And number five is the um, volume balance and retrigger rate, which I'll show you now. So here is the volume balance. Select another. So that affects the volume. And now the retrigger rate. Um, when you hold down these buttons here of the um, groove creator, it affects the retrigger rate. So just like this. So that's some pretty neat features of the retrigger and um, the live control knobs for the keyboard and backing. Um, you can only retrigger the um, groove creator as I've done here. Um, as you can see, you can't retrigger the styles. So. I know it sounds a bit, I know it sounds a bit funny because um, I've altered the um, with the live control knobs, but I just wanted to show you quickly that you can't re-trigger styles, but you can re-trigger the groove creator. So yeah, just, just like that pretty much. And that is the demonstration on how to use the real-time live control knobs. And now I want to talk to you a little bit about the groove creator patterns. Now on keyboards the PSR E433, the PSR E443, uh, the PSR E453 and the PSR EW400 they were called DJ patterns but on the PSR EW410 here and the 61 key version the PSR E463 they are called groove creator. Now on the DJ patterns on the previous keyboards you had five sections here but on the Groove Creator, we have four sections here and we have something here called Musical Climax, which is basically an ending to the Groove Creator pattern in which the, the previous PSRE keyboards didn't have. It just had five sections and there was no ending. Um, in order to end it, you just had to press the Start Stop button. But on the EW410 and the PSRE463, you had the Musical Climax here, in which is an ending to the Groove Creator. So, let me show you that real quick. So here is section A.
section B. Section C. Section D. And the musical climax, which ends it. Which ends the um, fruit creator. So that music climax is, is, is the ending of the um, Groove Creator. The um, PSR E433, the E443, etc. didn't have the musical climax. It just had five sections and it didn't have any like endings, just like it does with the musical climax on here. Uh, let me just show you another style real quick, just to... So again, we have section A. Section B. Section C, Section D, a musical climax which ends the groove creator pattern. So that's just a quick demonstration of the Groove Creator patterns and the musical climax in which the previous PSR E keyboards did not have. And now I want to show you the track control in which you can turn parts of a style or song on and off. So I'll show you that quickly. So I'll just turn on a style and you can turn parts on and off. And that doesn't just apply to styles, as um, it applies to Groove Creator as well. And just one more. Um, it also affects. It also affects the songs. Oh, sorry. Not whilst it's in demo mode. Um, so, um, just going to quickly show you. So, for example, we show this one. I'll show you another song. So there you go, and that is how you use um, track control to turn parts of a style, groove creator, or song, on and off. And now I'm going to show you 
how to record a song. Now, if you go to the song section, you'll see that um, there are 10 user songs for you to create your own songs. So we'll select one of the 10 user songs and all we just do is um, press the record button. Um, for this instance, I'm going to record a melody and the accompaniment. So now the um, keyboard is waiting for me to start playing. So we're going to start playing and record a song. So now it's um, on the screen, it says writing. So it's writing the song that um, we just recorded. And now we can play that back. So what if we want to add something else to our song? Um, simple, just um, we're going to um, press record again. And um, you can see the um, screen it's got track one flashing, but as we don't want to overwrite that, um, this keyboard has a, a, a six track sequence. So we have them um, five tracks for any sort of backings and the six track is for the um, accompaniment style, which I've just done. In order to change the track that we want, we just hold down the record button here and we select any one of these tracks here. So there's track two, track three, track four, track five, but we've already done the accompaniment, so that doesn't have any effect. So for this instance, we are going to select track two. And then we're going to select the voice that we want to um, record. So we're going to select this one. And then we're going to turn on the harmony and turn on the arpeggio. And then once you're ready, just pr press the um, start stop button to start recording again. So just like this. So we're going to add something else. And then just press stop once um, you finish recording. So now that we've added an extra track, our song will sound like this. So that's our song completed and recorded and um, yeah so you don't have to record songs using the accompaniment style as I did here you can also use these tracks to make a complete orchestra from scratch so that is how you um, record your own songs and now I want to show you how to use the audio recording and audio playback so that you can record your own audio files and, and um, play back audio files as well. So first of all, you will need to have a USB stick in the keyboard, which I have now. And what you will need to do is to format the USB stick so that you can 
use it on this keyboard but before you do that make sure you save anything that's important on the USB stick onto a computer before formatting it on this keyboard so I've done all that already and um, for the audio recording you just press this audio and there we have the um, my audio files in which I will show you afterwards so in order to record you just hold down the audio button and it says on the screen press record to start stop recording as you can see on the screen there and now it's telling me to press record oh before I do that I better oh yeah the auto accompaniment is already on so yes in order to um, start recording an audio file so that you can record your own audio um, you just press record and then it starts recording so just like this And then we're going to play something. And then we press record again to stop the audio recording. And the, on the screen it says writing, so it's writing what I've just recorded. But as it's audio, it might take a bit longer than it would recording a standard MIDI file, as I showed you earlier on. And there you go, you have, um, you have this file here called Audio One, and we can play that back. Also the audio playback we can also use the melody suppressor and depending on like which channels um, parts of the audio is um, the melody suppressor you can mute the um, vocals and stuff like that um, it depends on how it's been recorded if you're using um, recording software in your computer in which this case I'm not um, but here is the um, melody suppressor <laughs> So yeah, that's the, um, that's the um, audio recording, how you can record your own audio. And now we go back to the audio. And, um, and I'm going to show you the um, audio playback. Again, just like I showed on the CTX-5000, I'm going to do some EJ samples in which I've um, exported using the um, software EJ2 um, to demonstrate the audio playback. So here we go. And I'll also do melody suppressor as well. So here's the melody suppressor. Okay, and we'll do another EJ sample. So we'll take this one. This is really funky now. Funky. So there you go. It's as easy as that. And that is how you use um, audio recording to record your own audio files and audio playback to playback audio files. Now here's something else I want to show you. And as long as you've got a USB stick connected to the keyboard, and that is the file control. Now, if you hold down the function button, you see this little icon here, it says file control. Um, you just hold down the function 
function button and you'll get the file control menu come up. But this will only appear if you've got a USB stick connected to the keyboard. So we have these um, different choices. We have um, save sample or load sample if we've got any samples on the stick for the um, quick sampling, which I will show you soon. Um, delete sample, delete audio, save standard MIDI file, load, um, delete standard MIDI file, save user, but any stuff that you've got done on the, the use of the keyboard, you can save it into a USB stick, or you can load the user from the USB stick to the keyboard, delete user, or you can load a style, or format the USB stick, exit this menu, and so on. So that's just a, a little quick tip on how to bring up the file control. But it only it will only appear if you have a USB stick connected to the keyboard. Now, the last thing that I want to show you of this tutorial of the Yamaha PSR EW410, and that is the quick sampling. Now with the quick sampling, you can connect an external device to this keyboard via the um, keyboard's aux in, which is behind the keyboard. You have a mini jack that says aux in, and you connect that to a mini um, to a um, external device such as a smartphone or an iPad, just as I've done here. There's my iPad, which is connected to the aux in of the um, keyboard, and then and then what we're going to do is um, say that, that there's a part of a song that I really like and I want to record that as a sample on this keyboard. So yes, you can do that. So um, basically um, just connect your external device to the keyboard and then pause playback on the external device at the beginning of the sound or phrase you want to sample. Um, I've done that already. It's just something on YouTube. Um, and then after that, press the record button and then start playback on the external device to start sampling. But before we do that, we select voice number 759, which is the um, sample voice. And then we're going to press quick sampling. So now we are on quick sampling mode. And then we, and now it's telling me to press a key to the sample zone. So we're gonna press middle C. And now I'm on sample zone A, as you can see on here. Um, there are seven sample zones on the PSR EW410, and on the PSR E463 there are five sample zones. So here we have sample zone A, and sample zone B, C, D, E, F and G are on the um, upper part of the keyboard, in which I'll get to in a moment. Um, so yes, we're now on sample zone A, and now it's telling me to press record. So I press record and play back the um, song that I want to um, sample. So I just press record on the keyboard and then press play on the iPad of the part that I want to sample. Okay, now it's writing. It's now writing because sample time is um, approximately nine seconds. You can do like nine seconds. And now we get out of quick sampling. And now my sample voice should sound like this. So that's the part um, just sampled on the keyboard. So yeah, it's, it's really fun to do actually and really easy to do as you just seen. So just as easy as that. Okay, so now that we've um, done a sample for sample zone A, which is this. We're now going to um, do a sample for sample zone B. So we're going to go back to the quick sampling mode. Pressing this button here on the top left here. Um, and then we're going to select sample zone B. And now, here is the default. I'm 
on the screen it's telling me if I want to have it as a loop or not something that you couldn't do on sample zone A so we're going to select yes we're going to have it as a loop and now it's telling me to press record and then I'll play back the um, sample from the um, external device um, I've already selected something else I've selected um, just a audio of somebody playing the drums so we're going to sample that so now we're going to press record and play back our external device so record and play back the external device and now it now that's writing This one's taken a bit longer. There we go. And um, we get out of the um, quick sample mode. And that should be on sample zone B. So see the white keys here. The white keys here are not loops. And then here we have the um, black key which loops it. So that will loop over and over. And it stops as soon as you press a key again. So we have sample zone A, sample zone B, and sample B as a loop. So there you go, Sim simple as that. Now I just want to do a few more samples with the um, quick sampling. Um, this time I'm not using my iPad. Um, this time I am going to be using, if I just move this, I'll be using the Genos to do some samples. So I'll sample some sounds from the Genos and put it onto the um, EW410. So I will show you that now. So we're just going to go ahead and do exactly what we did. Sorry just moving the tripod so just bear with me on this that's better um, we're going to go ahead and do the quick sampling again and then we're going to select sample zone C we're going to do another drums so we're going to select yes and then we're going to press record and I'm going to play one of the rhythms from the Genos so we're going to do that now. So we would just press record and then press the start stop with the rhythms of the Genos. So now that it's writing. And this is coming from the Genos. So at the moment it is writing. And then we get out of quick sample mode, and now we should have the Genos rhythm. As a loop. And here it is not a loop. So here's sample zone A, B, and C. So very easy. Okay, and now I just want to do a couple more examples of this um, quick sampling. And um, I'm just going to add some vocals. Again, I'm using the Genos for this. So just go to um, quick sampling. And for this example, we are going to select sample zone D. <laughs> It's asking me if I want to loop it and this time no I'm not going to loop it and now I'm going to press record and um, play on the Genos one of the vocal ad-libs so just like this 
And now that's writing. Get out of the sample zone, and sample zone D should be. So um, a genus sort of sound on the PSR EW410. That can be possible now. <laughs> and now we're going to go one for one more example. So we're going to go to quick sampling again. And then we're going to select sample zone E. And we are not going to loop that. And we're going to press record and then play on the genos. That's it. And now that's writing. So there's the, um, the quick sampling. So here is sample zone A, in which I've recorded via YouTube from my iPad. And then sample zone B, again with the iPad with a loop. And then sample zone C, which is a rhythm from the genos. And sample zone D, which is a vocal ad lib from Genos. Ooh, yeah. And sample zone E. Ah. Again with a sample, um, again with a vocal ad lib from the Genos. Um, there's altogether seven sample zones, and I've recorded samples on A, B, C, D, and E. So I've recorded samples from five zones, even though there's up to seven. There's up to seven on the EW410, but five on the PSR E463. And that is how you use quick sample to record samples. Okay, so this is now the end of this tutorial of the Yamaha PSR EW410 keyboard. I do hope you have enjoyed this video and that you have found this tutorial useful. And um, I must say on this keyboard, you have some pretty good features for the range that it is, which is an entry level keyboard. And it's got things like um, quick sampling and audio recorder and audio player, which I thought was um, really good features to have for this range of keyboard. Again, I do hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and that you have found it useful. So please do write back to me and tell me what you think. And um, in the next video, or shall I say the next three videos, I'll be showing you the 758 voices on this keyboard. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video where I'll be showing you the voices.